in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you Her graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Genesis 25 let me show you something 5 and 6 Genesis 25 5 and 6 and Abraham gave all that he had to Isaac <laughs> verse 6 but unto the sons of the concubines he gave what did you see that now he gave the children gifts I'm sure they were dancing this one gave me a car this one gave me an estate and then he calls Isaac and says Isaac I'm not giving you anything go to verse 5 he says I want to give you everything I have that means he did not consider everything that left him as part of him because the Bible says he gave it are you are you Bible students so every the cars the houses the cattle he called those ones gifts he said I want to give you everything I have kneel down and he placed something on his life and said if I never meet you again you cannot be a failure go listen God has sent me after the order of Abraham this night that in the name of Jesus the son of the living God for everyone who has been changing every other thing and everything has refused to change may the blessing rest upon you may the blessing rest upon you please sit down you see, let me tell you sincerely, there are many people who talk about the blessing, but there are few people actually carrying it. The blessing is not a doctrine. It's not a subject of discussion. It's not just an intellectual debate. It is either on you or it is not. And if it is on you, it shows. When God made man, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, the first thing that he said the first word that man heard from the lips of God, the Bible says, verse 28 now, it says, and when God made man, the Bible says, and God blessed them. Say, bless them. Bless. It didn't say God gave them instructions. He blessed them. Be fruitful was not an instruction. It was a blessing. It didn't say God told them to be fruitful. No, it would be evil for God to tell them to be fruitful because fruitfulness requires empowerment multiplication requires empowerment replenishing requires empowerment to subdue requires empowerment having dominion requires empowerment so for God to have told them go and be fruitful that would be unfair the Bible says he blessed them he blessed them hmm. he blessed them have you been blessed to get a job or were you just instructed to get a job have you been blessed to do business or were you just advised to do business? Have you been blessed to prosper or were you just counseled by a financial advisor? It's a different thing to be counseled. It's a different thing to be advised. It's a different thing to be encouraged. You see the way the city is now. Um, just try business. That is an advice. That is not the blessing. It is one. Many people have been advised into the things they are doing now. And that's the reason why they labor and labor and labor and there is no result. Please believe me on this. There are people who were advised to do ministry. And they sincerely went with all their hearts. And Jabez said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. The second thing I want you to know is not everyone can bless you. He was not talking to everybody in this prayer. Because I can imagine that Jabez would have encountered so many people in his life. Like many of you may have had, it, it met many people. Not everybody can bless you. Please listen carefully. Only careers of the blessing can truly bless you. 
I hope this does not sound like arrogance. It is the truth. There were many widows in Zarephath, but the Bible says to none was Elijah sent. That means other people had encouraged her and yet they were carriers. When Elijah met her, he said, do not be afraid. Your oil, your, your, your water will not be spent. Your bread will not dry up. Just make me a morsel of bread and let me eat. Carriers of the blessing. Carriers of the blessing. You cannot carry the blessing and not know. No. There is no assumption. It is there or it is not there. And you know the presence of the blessing because it is able to attract to your life regardless the economy, regardless the demonic tide. It doesn't matter whether Satan is in your area or not. The blessing does not factor Satan. It acts as though he's not there. Listen, this is what the saints carried. This is what people like David carried. That they could make boastful statements supposedly that yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I fear no evil someone say the blessing I assure you by God it is not your territory that is disadvantaged I assure you by God it is not because you know some kind of the, no 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 it is that there is something exact that should come on you that for whatever reason, if you find that name, Jabez, around your life, sorrow and pain, disappointment and shame, it looks like nothing of dignity and glory and color comes out of your life. The first prayer is not just the casting of demons. I'm going to minister deliverance. But he's saying, oh, that thou wouldest bless me. Second prayer. We're still considering that scripture. Please give it to us, media. Verse 10 now. It says, and enlarge my coast. Do you know what it means for your coast to be enlarged? Psalm 71 and verse 21. I remember about three years or so ago, three or two years ago, the Lord gave me this scripture as a prophetic word when I was stepping into a particular season of my life and how true this word has been. Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Someone receive this word for yourself. Thou shall increase my greatness. It's one thing to be great, but it's one thing for your greatness to be multiplied. It says, thou shall increase my greatness and then comfort me on every side. Because greatness has a side effect. If you are not comforted on any side, greatness can become a curse to you. It says, thou shall increase my greatness. That means you are never at the same position spiritually and in every other area of your life. Enlarge my coast. Enlarge my coast. Give me room to find expression. Give me room to reveal Jesus in and through my life. There are many people who are as small as they've always been. No increase financially, no increase spiritually. There are territories that are still as small as you've always met them. You go there and you saw a red biro near the wall in 1981. That red biro is still there. You've seen buildings like that. You can almost describe there was a stone there when you were a small boy. That stone interrupting the junction is still there. There is no increase. In the name of Jesus, I speak to someone. Whatever has tied you down so that you don't grow, so that you don't enlarge, I curse it tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. I curse it tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast. Enlarge my coast. Enlarge my business. Enlarge the church you have given me. Can I tell you this? Growth is a very powerful sponsor of peace, joy, happiness, and fulfillment. One of the six, I have taught you here, that one of the six indices that measure fulfillment is growth. 
that means you want to know that you are growing and you are making pro progress you are evolving into superior versions of you and you are covering grounds as far as destiny is concerned when your life becomes indefinitely stagnated i assure you no matter who you are you do not have a lifetime patience to endure that kind of state eventually you will be worn out like many of us are right now enlarge my coast enlarge my coast enlarge my coast enlarge my coast increase me oh god even in the knowledge of god enlarge my coast let me have greater revelations enlarge my coast a greater level of possibilities let me know what else is there to explore number three i like the third one jesus that thy hand might be with me do you know what this means I wish I had time I would have taught you about what the Bible calls the hand of God because the hand of God is a very deep profound mystery give us first Corinthians first Chronicles 29 I believe first Chronicles 29 uh, that should be 11 or 12 first Chronicles 29 yes 11 thine O Lord is the greatness watch this and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine it says thine is the kingdom O Lord and thou art exalted as head above all let's read verse 12 together ready one to read both riches and honor come from thee and thou reignest over all it says and it is in thy and in thy hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all so when the bible says the hand of god is walking with a man look at what the hand of god carries it says it is in your hand your hand carries power and might it says in thy hand it is to make great that means when you see people rising they did not just rise there is a hand lifting them up when you see people make progress they are not just moving from one direction to the other there is an invisible hand pushing men it says let your hand be with me because no matter what I have gotten if your hand is not with me it has to be with me as a defense it has to be with me as a guarantee for continuity let your hand be upon me then let it be upon the ministry then let it be upon my family let your hand be upon me the hand of the Lord is mighty that is what came upon Elijah the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. That means when the hand of the Lord comes upon you, there is speed because Elijah ran. Elijah ran. The hand of God cannot come upon you and you walk. The hand of God cannot come upon you and you crawl. Regardless the limitations, when the hand of the Lord comes upon you, it was the same hand of God that came upon Samson. That the, it came as the spirit of God, mighty upon Samson, the spirit of might. And the Bible says the wax was like, you know, the, the, the chain was like wax before the fire. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Behind the mysterious rising of men, behind the mysterious forceful advancement of men, is an invisible hand moving men my question is has that hand come near you to move you or are you just moving by the strength of the flesh intellectually calculating your way to greatness will be a waste of your time i assure you not in this wicked world there is a hand that moves men man of god hear me you don't just rise there is a hand it's good to plan but if that hand does not come you will remain there you will think you are rising you will soon find out you are just jumping you know what it means to jump to jump means that you rise up with the guarantee that you are coming down that's what it means to jump the hand of God maybe there's a man of God here maybe there's a family here that really needs the hand of God you have tried to move forward you had a family meeting it's time for us to go forward maybe a board meeting in your business it's time to go forward maybe as a pastor it's time to go forward it takes more than a decision 
a decision is powerful but I am telling you behind the mysterious motion of men the speed of men the consistency of men is the invisible hand of this great God I want you if you can listen to my teaching series I preached it somewhere in the East helped by God please go and listen to it I showed three ways there that God helps men number one the ministry of mercy number two the gift of men number three the ministry of the Holy Spirit this is how God helps men the hand of God let the hand of God come upon that family and you will watch weak people that look like they will never rise step by step someone will leave the village and go to the town and come back after six months as if you went to meet a herbalist because the helper that hand that can move men now watch this if you ask me to lift this up what part of my body am I going to use is that true and if I'm limited I will need another hand and another hand and another hand either many small hands or one big hand are we together now yes I'm not going to use my mouth to lift this I'm not going to use my feet to lift this so if your destiny is to be lifted there is a hand unfortunately your hand cannot lift you logically can you hold yourself and lift yourself Bazanji Kunyaba That means in order to bring you down, the devil must bring the hand that has lifted you. Most people don't know how mighty the hand of God is. Our little children used to sing a song, he's got the whole world in his hands. That sounds like a special number. The whole world in his hands. And yet that hand comes to pick you. Ah, Jesus said, all that you have given me, I have kept. Kept in my hands. And none is lost except the son of perdition. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm saying this because God is speaking to someone prophetically. You have come here looking like nothing. You have come here as you, you have become an object of people's discussion. When they are bored and they want to talk of somebody as a pity story, your name is what comes up. But I want you to find faith because there is an invisible hand, the hand of Jehovah that has lifted ordinary men, ordinary people in ministry, in business, that hand will so lift you after this meeting in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. I hope you believe what I'm saying. So the next time you see people mysteriously lifted, guarded, mysteriously making progress, don't ask how it happened. Now you know. Jabez said, if your hand does not come, the kind of pit I found myself in as a result of the curse of my mother, there is no way out. Ah. You are Ebenezer. You are Ebenezer. The lifter of men. You are Ebenezer. see you can doubt a healing miracle and say was the person really healed you can doubt some kind of miracle and say how are you sure how are you sure the growth disappeared but you cannot doubt transformation that someone who came you you used to know him a carpenter's son now riding in glory you used to know that lady you used to know that family with the proverb Ichabod upon them and then the mighty hand of God if you do not believe God lifts men then um, you are going to have to live a life of pain because it is in your believing that you allow that hand to come and lift you but let me tell you ladies and gentlemen this God you see is not only a blesser he's a lifter hallelujah
oh that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast and that your hand will be with me that your hand will be with me that your hand will be with me I like the last part listen now this is the word for this miracle service it says and that thou wouldest keep me in fact go to give us amplified and let's see what amplified says I want to read the last part and I want you to really understand it says and you would keep me from evil so that it might not hurt me you will keep me from evil because one of the things I'm sure that I've taught you here is that with every lifting with every mantle with every grace come challenges there are many of us God has not answered our prayer for lifting because you do not yet understand the dynamics of preserving greatness greatness will attract anything and everything including Satan as soon as Jesus was announced he went to the wilderness and Satan left everything he was doing on earth and went and waited in the wilderness patiently for 40 days until he was done and Satan began to tempt him Satan is attracted to glory Satan is attracted to greatness so when it looks like your family has not been attacked it's because he believes you are under bondage but let God begin to lift you who is this rising from the east from the west who is this rising from the north the south I thought this was a family of idol worship who is this prophet that is rising who is this lady in the order of Deborah I thought women don't rise in this family who is this one breaking a hundred year protocol most people like anointing and impartation for greatness and they do not know that the moment the mantle of greatness comes upon you you become a prey you become a principal point of attack are we together now this is very important everything around you begins to fight you in your workplace Joseph was a young man who had a dream and it was clear that greatness was on his way to his life and the Bible says because the father gave him a coat of many colors even his brothers fought him he went down to the pit and went down to Potiphar's house went down to the prison but that greatness once that hand is upon you even from the prison it still took him to the palace are we together now this is very important some of you have tasted greatness but you are almost running away from it now because you did not access the defense dimension of the blessing there is a defense dimension that the blessing brings upon a man when you are blessed you have to be defended how many of you put your um, gold or whatever jewelries and just put it in a plate and drop it outside do you see that happen you have a jewelry box am I right on that and sometimes we have all kinds of safes with different layers of security you put it there and lock it then tie it then lock it then hide it again <laughs> so when the Bible says that Jabez was praying and said Lord make sure that in everything you are thank you for your hand but please do not allow evil prevail over me the psalmist said unto thee O Lord do I lift up my soul he said oh my God in you I trust let me not be ashamed let not my enemies triumph over me you know it as a song but it was a desperate declaration of a man who knew that greatness is always surrounded by evil did you hear what I said let your family begin to rise and you see what happens who is this woman to rise who is this man to rise what can we do to bring him down what can we do to bring her down if we can't get him can we try the children but in the name of Jesus I declare over someone here the devil will only waste his time as far as bringing you down concerned. men will only waste their time as far as bringing you down is concerned hallelujah now when you rise by compromise you will be afraid of your position but when it is the hand of God that lifts you he stands behind you as a mighty terrible one 
In other words, let me see the person who will change the story of this family negatively again. Let me see the person who will stop this family from rising again. Hallelujah. When I began to pray and I heard that word Jabez, Jabez, Jabez three times, I knew exactly what the Lord was saying. In that statement to me, God was saying, who is available for me to bless? I want to bless somebody and make that person a spectacle, a blessing in ministry that people will sit down and say, ah, it's not jealousy, but my God, you mean God can do this with a man? God can do this with a business? God can do this with the people? Did your Bible not say I and the children that the Lord has given to me? It says we are for signs and for wonders. Do you believe that? I believe this oh, with all my heart that for the rest of your life every week is an episode of signs and wonders through your life and enlarge my coast that by next week someone will come and say apostle look at the doors that open in one week strategic connections strategic opportunities whether in ministry or in business and that thou wouldest bless me enlarge my coast and let your hand be upon me moving me moving me from place to place is that same hand that moves men from May to June it's not time that moves men time can be passing and you are in one place it is the hand that moves you the hand that moves you moves you some of you you are in May now but in the realm of the spirit the truth is that you are still in 2017 you are still in 2018. I, I hope you know that time can pass, but you don't pass with time. You are still remaining there. So physically, you are in 2023, but in the realm of the spirit, the date there that is matched to your life and your reality is many, many years back. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto me everything that was stolen the only way to explain restoration for you is how they pay workers area salary that's the only way I know to help you understand have you seen someone that perhaps for 10 years had been old and they were still dragging in court finally the judge gives a verdict and says pay this person back dates the payment from 2010 to 2023 and the institution stands there they don't want to do it but the judge has given his verdict in the name of jesus for certain of you here within the time that we have and I'm, I'm not just joking I'm not entertaining you that God will see from what point Satan started attacking your family and there are things he will carry from there in the name of Jesus Christ some of you it will be before you were even born that the Spirit of God who's listen the Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne that God will begin to backdate certain prophetic things certain blessings and mantles and graces and open doors hallelujah and there are some of you who have experienced the help of God in many ways but you came for this miracle service so that God will answer the last part of the prayer because the attacks around your life the physical ones are the least because if you know that someone is standing near you you can do something but what if you don't know how will you know that the kiss of Judas was a sign of death I know that when an enemy stands with a sword I know he has come to fight but how do you fight someone who came to kiss you 
don't you know there is another kind of sword that comes from the mouth not from the hands the Bible calls it the scourging tongues of men Job he said in five things God would deliver you there are arrows that fly by day there are noisome pestilences there are destructions listen please look up I know people that the moment God lifted they woke up one morning and one mysterious pain just when he became a director headache this morning next tomorrow the right eye cannot see in the name of Jesus every covenant every coven every demonic orchestration against your life by fire it goes down this night hear me can I tell you one of the greatest ways that Satan attacks great men is through sickness most of you don't know sickness is hardly a condition of people who are rising in life those who are rising in life hardly fall sick not because they are healthy because at that point sickness as a weapon will not profit the devil listen carefully I hope that we'll have a series on 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 supernatural healing and health and I will teach you something do you notice that most people who have not really made it, Satan will hardly use the weapon of sickness because it does not really profit him. The real assignment of sickness is to bring down great people. Read your Bible. Find out those who were sick in the Bible and you will see Job, the greatest man from the East, when Satan tested him. Are we together now? Yes. The moment people become great, the devil knows that at this point you probably will have security people protecting you so attacking you from that angle will not profit him he knows that probably you have influence there are many things money can do but he knows there is something money cannot do and these fiery darts with all the hell things you see someone who just wake up and they will tell you that there is something growing inside his brain within two weeks it has become the size of a golf ball Are we together now that's why the psalmist said I lay me down and I slept he said I wait for the Lord sustain me that means it's one thing to sleep oh, as a great man and it's another thing to wake up because when men sleep many things happen Satan comes to plant hold on he he only plants tears among wheat he does not plant tears on an empty farm. That means if your life does not have color and nothing is growing there, Satan does not come to plant anything there. He waited until the labor of the farmer was now speaking. He waited until the company was rising. He waited until the ministry was now blossoming. He waited until the children were now becoming teenagers, ready to carry the family name. Aha! The moment Satan sees wheat, be careful, he's coming. He's also a farmer, he can farm. I'm saying this so that you can take whatever you want to take. But let me tell you, if it is an attack, that's why we pray for people to be healed. It is more than just showing that a man of God is anointed. There are many, many sicknesses that medical science can deal with it. That is not really the concern, we can pray for you. If you have headache and you can take Panadol and you are fine, you've made our job easier. But we are dealing with the ones that you go to the hospital, the demonic headache that does not answer to Panadol. Because that one is not stress. That one is, is your name being mentioned somewhere. That, why will this man rise? Instead of attacking 30 people in that family, attack this man and let him die. Listen, in the book of Esther, in the book of Esther, sit down for a moment. In the book of Esther, some of you didn't even know you were standing. In the book of Esther, watch this. The Bible says, you saw her man just as a faithful administration, ad administrator. But her man was a wizard. Her man was not an administrator. He was a wizard. There was a connection between her man and Vashti. When Vashti left, it weakened her man, but did not destroy him. Because her man had won the heart of the king. And when you read your Bible, the day they were to strike the nation of Israel, Haman used divination to get the date. They, they, they conjured the elements, elemental forces. What day will it be to strike these people? But then they said, okay, 
now that we have it who and who should we kill let me tell you what what her man's plan was her man's plan was first to start with Mordecai then after he's he's done with Mordecai don't think Esther will be spared Esther would have been the next after Esther then the king himself will be the final one he was already eyeing the king because when the king asked him and said what should be done to this man he said uh-huh let him wear the king's robe ride on the king's horse what else is left is only to sit on the king's palace that means he was eyeing that i'm coming let me first finish with her man let me show you how satan attacks he does not attack the jews like that he first goes to mordecai because it was through mordecai esther came then when he's done with mordecai he would destroy esther then destroy the king then become king so when you see the devil wanting to strike the family he's not stupid he will not come and strike everyone there is a way of gauging people's advancement in the spirit what one person can we hit in this family that will be the same thing as hitting everybody that's why some of you did not prepare to come for this miracle service but god pushed you by his spirit and said come oh you don't know what june is going to be like come and sit down and access grace let these devils be driven out oh we have been anointed to do this listen let me tell you in the name of jesus not one strange spirit will be spared tonight you hear of the testimonies that happen here listen testimonies happen when the spirits that are behind these tragedies give way are we together now yes that you will protect me jesus in teaching us what we call the lord's prayer he said our father which art in heaven hallowed be your name he said your kingdom come your will be done in f as it is in heaven then he says give us this day our daily bread next prayer he says lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil he didn't say deliver me it's a corporate thing if you pray for deliverance for yourself alone tonight you are selfish deliver us because in africa if you are free alone you are not truly free do you agree with me deliver us from evil deliver us who are the us my company my family the ministry deliver us from evil deliver us from evil I've had the honor and the privilege of praying for people and sometimes even though I've seen this for many years I am in shock and wonder at how easy it is Satan can bring down great people if there is no spiritual and human force in partnership with God that stands as a defense for them you see you can rejoice and say my business is doing well go and read your Bible and see how sudden it is that men go down are we together the worst of is when Satan tries and nothing can happen as you sleep that's the end of it I remember a lady who sent me a text some time ago that she was sleeping in the night and physically she felt physically what she told me a hand came and held her neck you know how you are strangling someone and she was gasping for breath till she woke up like that shouting Jesus Jesus and nothing happened and she woke up literally felt a presence and it left what do you think demons are doing now if you were a demon just as an example please if if you were a demon what will you be doing now to be efficient just think will you be you are yes you are sent to everybody but if you were a demon and you want to be productive what is the wisest approach to waste your time running around everybody on the streets or to settle down and fashion weapons the bible says no weapon fashioned do you know what it means to fashion to fashion means to study what you will use that weapon for so if you were a demon will you just see someone on the street and start following him what is your name can i attack you no you find out okay i have an assignment to attack ten thousand people but out of those ten thousand people who are the top three that i can bring down first 
to make my work easy it is always the strategy of Satan he looks for the strongest and brings down that means if you came here tonight it's because the hand of God has perceived you as the strongest somewhere that the devil wants to attack and God is bringing you some of you for the sake of your family members so that you are strengthened you are delivered empowered and sent back as an agent with fire and with grace you believe this and let me tell you we're going to do a very quick work tonight if there is no time to take testimonies no problem but I, I my heart is burdened because when the Lord told me Jabez that means at the end of it honor and glory is what must come out of your life this night hallelujah praise the name of the Lord don't sit back and allow the devil wreck your destiny wreck the destinies of those around you and say it does not matter I just know that one day go better God is a good God he will change things the Bible says Jabez cried unto the Lord when you become passive you become very very sorry for want of word become very um, very organized there is there is a desperation that you must carry the desperation of Hannah the desperation of Gideon the desperation of Jabez have you seen a woman going to give birth and she's interested in her makeup that just when the child is about to come and say sorry I, I I just need to make sure that you know this one is in place can I have a last look at myself huh have you seen that happen There is a desperation. The woman with the issue of blood said, this is not the issue of shame. I'm tired of this nonsense. I will cry it. I will touch the head of his garment. Let me be punished later, but for now. There are some of you who are not yet angry enough. Sincerely, I'm telling you. You are still organized. He's saying, well, the poverty situation is not so bad. At least we can borrow money. Now you are owing more than 10 million. It started from 10,000 naira. And the devil is an expert in growing it. Before you know it, you see that your whole destiny has been given to the company you are owing. Is that not what happened to the wife of the sons of the prophet? Remember, you think that she started by, they were going to take her children as collateral. Your children there does not just represent your physical child. Whatever it is that can make for continuity of your destiny. Satan can use things around your life and force you to carry your future and pay for today with it. I'm, I'm, I'm planting a holy anger in you so that when it's time to pray and it's time to receive, you will do what Jabez did. Tonight is not just to shout amen. My job is to release grace with you and stand in faith with you. But you have a responsibility for God's sake to pray in holy anger. Give us that scripture. Verse 10. The Bible says, and God, and God granted him that which he requested. God granted him not that which he has been admiring in others not that which he, he wants passively i know it but it's just between me and god <clears throat> blind Bartimaeus said thou son of david i don't care who else is hearing it have mercy on me and the people said keep quiet you are the one who knows the heart you are the one who knows what lack of employment has done to you you are the one who you you know it's always it's often said that the person wearing the shoes is the one who knows where it is hurting so when it's time to pray don't just stand and be organized and say well i i know i don't want people to see me let camera not pass me you have to deal with certain things once and for all this spirit of death that i'm always seeing in my dreams tonight is the time to deal with it i i, I reject untimely death but just say no it will not come if that is a joke you are going to have to place aggression this door that opens for others, but just when it gets to me, that door closes. Somebody was supposed to sign something on your table. And just because he turned to discuss, a wind just pushed all the files and they can't find it again. And that becomes fine. What kind of satanic thing is that? And you are here keeping quiet and he said, it does not matter. He will find it one day. 
the same wind that pushed it must push it back was it not the east wind that blew that Abba listen I'm, I'm, I'm planting a holy anger in you father you gave me five children the devil is already taking two I assure you Satan's plan is not to take two is to take all he took one and you kept quiet the Bible says in the early church watch this the book of Acts when Satan took James and the church kept quiet they didn't do anything about it he said ah the Bible says he proceeded further and he now took Peter and the church said no more the Bible says the church gathered together and began to pray the same angels that rescued Peter were still there when James was dying but because there was silence and they did not pray the same angels that would deliver your family today they've always been there it's just that you've not given it the kind of aggression hallelujah listen let me tell you something someone once asked me a question and said apostle what does it take to build a global ministry like this and I looked at him with compassion I said which part of the answer now am I going to give this person one of it is a testimony in the spirit that you have mastered the art of keeping evil forces at bay when physical victory manifests is because that victory has been established in the spirit please hear me it is not when your job manifests that god answered you <clears throat> when you deal with it in the realm of the spirit and it's finished you will find out that you can wake up in the morning that's why you see people come for service and sometimes they are ministered to there are a few people who may walk back maybe they, their healing has started and they did not feel anything you know and they may feel disappointed you hear them testify that they went home and slept and woke up because once it is done in the realm of the spirit that is it Goliath died in the realm of the spirit David killed Goliath before he met him there and he said, Mr. Man, you are standing just as a mass of interruption. I'm going to bring you down even with a stone. So when we are going to pray now, please, I want you to pray with seriousness. There are things that you wrote. There are sicknesses in your body. Can I tell you, we are in the days where headache can become cancer, thanks to demons. You will feel a little headache, something that you will just say, ah, it's paining me. The next time the pain goes to this side, then it goes to another place unconnected i'm not a doctor but you will know this is a demon spirit you hear people telling you there's something roaming around my body have you heard people say that it starts from my head you know how hard it is to move around your body even god had to put veins and arteries and here is a demon spirit walking around freely until you stop it by the power of the holy ghost how about businesses that are going down from January your business has been going down and you've just been watching it thank God for principles listen we are people of principles and we're intelligent people but we are people who place superior honor to the realm of the spirit the physical realm is a child a slave helpless slave to the realm of the spirit if you do not deal with things spiritually whatever effort you are making physically is a total waste of time I assure you if you're in ministry here as a man of God, it is not just by invitation, poster, social media. Those are physical things and they are profitable. The real victory is in the realm of the spirit. Apostle, why is it that people do not like me? I'm a sincere person. Every time someone wants to help me, they seem to forget. You think they make themselves forget? There are wicked spirits. What do you think made the wine presser to forget Joseph? And added two more years one man's forgetfulness added another man's pain hallelujah how about someone who just received some money that should bless the family and wipe their tears and all of a sudden three people went down somebody needs a surgery five million another person needs a surgery eight million another person has a mysterious sickness that we must fly the person to uk to check you calculate everything is the exact same money you collected someone just wants to help you and the devil will masquerade and use certain faces in the dream 
to now come and appear as an angel of light and say don't help this person that person is carrying a familiar spirit and your destiny helper gets up in the morning in fear because the devil used your face or used something else to money and you find out that uh, let me tell you africa especially is a place where people respect the realm of the spirit someone can be a very intelligent person he goes to bed and the devil just uses your face you come with a knife in the dream supposedly to kill the person the person stands up and says oh so this is my enemy you go to the office the next day good afternoon sir you are leaving this job now what did i do no before you kill me i will kill you both of you are innocent there is a spirit joining this thing has happened even between husband and wife have you seen it happen that a man will go to sleep a wicked spirit will use the face of the wife and the man gets up and says, no no way not in this house and the devil is just standing stealing killing destroying in the name of jesus tonight by the power that raised jesus from the dead in the name of Jesus Christ, every spirit masquerading through situations and circumstances to abort the glory of God in your life goes down this night. Goes down this night. Goes down this night. The same way the Lord can make it happen that someone goes to bed and suddenly he has a dream and it's about you and the person is thirsty and you are bringing water the person gets up in the morning and says you you got a job in this company when two weeks ago come you are promoted to my PA what happened I had a dream oh, and I saw you giving me water and in my mind I interpret it to mean you're a good person ah, life do you know I really feel sorry for people who downplay the realm of the spirit. I'm a person of principles. There are, it's not all about just demons and the realm of the spirit. But let me tell you, in order of priority, the physical realm came as the child of the realm of the spirit. That means for anything physical, it is only the after effect of something that has been settled in the spirit. Do you know a true story and then we'll begin to pray. One time, the Lord opened my eyes and I saw something. I saw someone who in the realm of the spirit, he had already died. But in the physical, he was still walking. He was still alive. But in the realm of the spirit, like this person has been buried in a coffin over. Now, that person will be walking, yet not knowing that you've been finished. Anything can kill you, including a bike. You just see that the bike pass and just hit someone and he fell down and they say both bones broke. Someone fell, children go to pluck mango from a tree. They fall from that tree and clean themselves and stand up and climb again. And yet someone just fell from a bike and both of his bones. You think that is just a fall? Listen, we are, God gave us a mind to think, but let's be careful so that we do not allow the devil cheat us by just folding our arms. When you see evil, call it for what it is and deal with it by the blood. Ah, what is this pain that I'm having? Mysterious pain. And the devil says, cancer, like it happened to your father, like it happened to this. And said, no, it will not happen to me. I went to school. That's not how the realm of the spirit works you stand there listen there is a way you open fire at the devil huh you have drawn a line anything you permit will grow hear me anything you permit will grow you permit failure it grows you permit the spirit of death it takes one step towards your house you turn back in the name of jesus christ this is how believers are taught to maintain victory hallelujah apostle but you know the truth is that the way after the pandemic it affected everybody my business has gone down till tomorrow i agree and i sympathize with you 
but do you know that for your business to come back it is going to take the favor of God the blessing like I taught the ministry of men have you called the men no I'm sure that God will just make it happen whereas somebody in the midst of that pandemic held on to the horns of the altar and shouted the door for his new level to open up I don't know who is angry in this place tonight but in the name of Jesus I came here to release my faith with you that anything that does not name the name of Christ it must live your life now please open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and begin to pray open your mouth and begin to declare that in the name of Jesus the son of the living God my life must be a capture of victory total victory total deliverance total liberation he who the son sets free is free indeed by the power of the Holy Ghost someone is praying every mysterious sickness roaming around my body I curse you by the God of heaven spirit of death I call you by your name and I banish you from my life banish you from my family banish you from my business someone is praying Hallelujah. 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 Now I'm going to lead you to pray the prayer that Jabez prayed. Number one, it says, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me. As I mentioned them, I will lead you to pray. This is the miracle service. I want you to participate. If you want to hold hands with someone to encourage you, that is, you, you can do that. But by all means, any spirit of slumber that wants you to sleep or just fold your arms and watch people is cheating you. Say in the name of Jesus. Father, I decree and declare that by mercy, let your blessing rest upon me let your blessing rest upon me rest upon my family open your mouth and begin to pray the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow the blessing of the Lord that causes a man to prevail oh that thou wouldest bless me bless me bless me I activate the blessing upon my life I activate the blessing I decree and declare blessed in the city blessed in the country blessed in Abuja blessed in Lagos blessed in the United Kingdom blessed in South Africa blessed in the United States in the name of Jesus Man of God, pray. Pray the blessing of the Lord. Pray it upon your spirit. Pray it upon your children. Now pray it upon the works of your hands. Blessed shall thou be in the city. Blessed shall thou be in the country. Blessed shall be your needing trough. Go ahead and pray. Outside, make sure you are praying. All the overflows, make sure you are praying. In the name of Jesus, the blessing is upon me. 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 Speaking loud and clear. Speaking loud and clear. Speaking louder than any curse. Speaking that louder than any demonic thing. One more minute, you are praying. 
the blessing is upon me prospering the works of my hands the blessing is upon me manifesting as signs and wonders the blessing is upon me turning me into a mysterious sign and wonder The blessing is upon me. Someone pray. Shaleke peketos kata frendeke parusiata. Embra kato kapres kate peketos. Sobanto shodo baleketos. Ibra to seveze kate beleketos yata. For in Jesus' name we pray. Ah! For in Jesus' name we pray. I tell you things are shifting in the spirit now watch this do you know what allowed the flood to come what allowed the flood to come was that the blessing was withdrawn and was only it was completely withdrawn and that was the only possibility for the flood to come so when the flood was over watch this now when the flood was over, the flood of Noah now, remember? Everything and everyone except Noah, his wife, the three sons and their wives and the animals that were in the ark. Am I right on that? These were the only things that were alive. You find that Noah came out and then Noah reared an altar. You find that in Genesis chapter 8 and verse 21 and 22. He, he carried some of the animals that were left. Some of the animals came two by two. Some of the animals came seven by seven. You will see that even some that were left, Noah still slaughtered them and they died. But watch what happened. When God wanted the earth to increase again, give us Genesis chapter 9 and verse 1. I want to show you the power of the blessing. What did God do to Noah? Same thing he did to Adam. You see, and God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, be fruitful. Does that sound like something he had said before? multiply that means every time God sees small things what he does to increase them is to make this same thing keep this scripture there because this is going to be your prayer that means in God's mind what it means to be blessed is to be fruitful what it means to be blessed is to multiply what it means to be blessed is to replenish you are not blessed in God's mind until he sees fruitfulness, until he sees multiplication, until he sees the ability to replenish and to subdue. This is God's idea. Every time you hear him speaking a blessing, he will break it down and say, this is my idea of being blessed. Be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. Are you ready to pray? We are still praying the blessing prayer. Say, Father, as a result of the blessing, that is upon me I speak to my destiny be fruitful multiply and replenish open your mouth and begin to pray I am blessed blessed to be fruitful blessed to multiply nothing remains small in my life but the Spirit of God and God bless Noah and his sons and God bless Koinonia and all those connected to her by prophecy and God bless Noah and his sons and God bless Noah and his sons God bless Noah and his sons. You can call the name of your children. You can call the name of every company, everyone who is under your care. Declare upon them, be fruitful, multiply, be fruitful, multiply, replenish. Replenish. Replenish, replenish.
replenish. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next prayer. I'm telling you something is shifting in your life. He said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast. You want to understand this? Let's go to Isaiah 54 from verse 1 and 3. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that did not travail with child. He said, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said the Lord. Verse 2, it says, enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtain of thy habitation. Spare not and lengthen thy cord and strengthen thy stakes. Why? Verse 3, hallelujah. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Look at me. Do you know what it means to be enlarged? To be enlarged means to grow. That's how we grow. Is that true? We grow through enlargement. There are people who, respectfully speaking, I got to find out a few cases where some people remain children even in their, as adults. You still see them like children, like babies. It's a medical condition that people remain literally. You look at them, their face, nothing changes. There is no growth. There is no enlargement. Yet some of them are 25, 30 years, and they, are, see, they have the voice of children, everything around them. And when we talk of enlargement, we're not just talking of physical growth, financial growth, spiritual growth. The level of grace you've been functioning on for 10 years is still the same. The level of favor is still the same. Did the Bible not say grace and peace can be multiplied? Are you ready to pray that prayer of enlargement? That Father, I'm tired of being at this level for a long time. Enlarge me. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Spiritually. This level of my prayer life, this level of my word study life, someone is praying, enlarge me by the spirit of the living God. Enlarge me in ministry. Enlarge me. Shapakato parakato shafragates. Krasagata farasko sebelegos. Embrakato shafrandes kalebash. Kratege belegates sefraskati balakos yata. Enlarge my coast, enlarge my coast, enlarge my coast, enlarge coin on here, enlarge coin on here, enlarge my spiritual life, enlarge every aspect of my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Don't be tired, you'll soon sit down. But listen, please look at me. What is the difference between a one room and a duplex? What is the difference? Space. Am I right on that? What is the difference between a great duplex and a mansion, as you call it? Space. What you can do in a one room, what you cannot do in a one room, you are able to do it in a duplex. Am I right on that? Now, just respectfully speaking, if you have one room, everything is there. The kitchen is there. The whatever is there. Are we together? Smallness has the characteristic effect of constraint. It does not give you the opportunity to be efficient. Are we together now? So, imagine that you move from one room to a two-bedroom. Now, you can convert one maybe to be a library, one to be a guest room. Have you seen people now, respectfully speaking, have you seen, for instance, say a couple, a husband and a wife, and maybe two children, and all they have is one room? You've seen what happens in the night. The father is constrained. Maybe he even has to sleep on a chair. 
for the wife and maybe the children and maybe the little baby you see that now did you not read in your Bible that Solomon was judging a case of two prostitutes where because of the constraint of space they slept on their visions and one killed they killed their children because of lack of space let me tell you, enlargement is a blessing. What 10,000 cannot do, 1 million can do. Are we together now? Yes. Oh, my man needs to be treated and the bill is 200,000. And that innocent woman is about to die because all you have is 10,000. But when God enlarges you, you have more space. You can even be a blessing. What this level of anointing can do, cannot do this level of anointing can do are we together now yes this level of anointing can only lead you to pastor 50 members not to insult but that is what it can do it cannot bring you a global ministry this way no no you cannot put the tire of a tricycle on a tractor or a, a bulldozer or a lorry can that work but they are all tires so when you bring that small tire, how many of you have seen spare tires of cars that look very small? Because you were not supposed to drive with it for a long time. It's only sufficient to take you to the mechanic. You see some of these giant cars and they come with enlarged tires. And sometimes when smaller cars are struggling because of the pothole, those cars can come and pass as if they are not even aware that's what enlargement does when you are limited when you are constrained five children you are living on 50,000 it's not a blessing oh let me tell you the truth not in our world today you are anointed you pray you have to pray for one week for headache to go you can't have a ministry that is flourishing that way I told you people don't follow men they follow results when you are a man that commands that result, it will look like they are following you. But what they really follow are results. It takes a level of dedication and loyalty and training by God for people to look beyond results and now start following men. Enlarge my coast. Enlarge my... I've prayed this prayer many times. This ministry did not start like this. And this ministry will not remain like this because that grace for enlargement is there. So why is it that your life is remaining that way? One more time, I want you to refuse. Look at every area of your life that has refused to grow and declare, let that anointing for enlargement rest upon it. Open your mouth and pray one last time. Father, enlarge me by the spirit of the living God. Enlarge me by the spirit of the living God for the sake of your glory for the excellency of your name please pray hallelujah number three let your hand be with me hallelujah let your hand be with me. Let your hand be with me. You are going to pray. This is what is responsible for advancement. This is what is responsible for speed. When the hand of the Lord comes upon men, they refuse to stay, not just at that level, but even in that location. It is God that moves men. When you find stagnancy, what you need is the hand of God. The hand of God moves men. The Bible says it was the Lord that caused Moses to advance. Say, Father. One more time. Say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. Yes. By your hand. Advance me. By your hand. Advance my destiny. Open your mouth and begin to pray. By your hand. By your hand, by your hand, advance me in ministry. By your hand, advance me in every area of life. Someone is praying. 
Kelakata fraska tebeke toske tebran kali katosha fraska zelegetej empre kete kete kata prata lakato freke segetej advance me advance me by your spirit hallelujah 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 and with the last prayer point it will now lead me to begin to minister as fast as we can fire is going to begin to fall in this place now give us the last prayer point keep me from evil listen the psalmist said he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty is that true verse 2 says give us verse 2 i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust verse 3 surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler from the noisome pestilence verse 4 he shall cover thee with his feather and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be and thy buckler verse 5 it says thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night nor the arrow that flyeth by day verse 6 nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor the destruction that wasted at noonday seven a thousand shall fall by thy side and ten thousand by thy right side but it shall not come nigh thee last verse only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked listen do you know what it means for god to keep you to keep you means lord i will not die before my time hallelujah i was listening to a video this morning by late archbishop benson idahosa and he was teaching somewhere in the states and he was just sharing how that when god gave him an instruction in Benin then and he went and he was praying and praying and God gave him an instruction for seven days to go out every night at the roundabout alone and begin to pray and declare and say Benin belongs to Jesus and he said he prayed it the spirit of fear came what if you would die he said in one of the days when you got there he saw parts of animals that were caught and on them his name was written there can I tell you saying i do not trouble anybody nobody would trouble me is a joke all it takes to be a victim of evil is to be born the moment you find yourself here you have to understand the warfare dimension of life are we together now i'm saying this because many of you do not know you're a man of god here yeah, i want you to listen daily daily there are demons and spirits it's only when we go to heaven that i will know how many shrines how many pots how many sacrifices carry my name daily but they'll continue to boil it as dinner lunch supper it, it will have no effect not because listen not because we are powerful on our own we have found from scripture that there is immunity in that name that there is immunity in that blood are you ready to pray now say father by the blood of Jesus the blood of the eternal covenant every covenant tying me to failure to death to weakness to defeat right now by the blood let it be broken open your mouth and pray every covenant Every covenant tying me to death, witchcraft, defeat, yokes, ordinances. No matter how long be broken, no matter how long be broken. No matter how long be broken, every covenant 
that says people will not rise that says people will not shine hallelujah hallelujah oh be lifted above all other gods we lay our crown and worship you oh be lifted above all other gods we lay our crown halabara very sensitive listen there was a time in my life I have met angels I have encountered demon spirits by the privilege of God's grace I have encountered Jesus the living Christ the realm of the spirit is not an unfamiliar path I know a bit about how spiritual things work the first time I would encounter a demon spirit, I was praying in the night somewhere in Zaria and there was a generator close to that place. And I was praying and going close to that place. And the next thing, I moved here and there is a solid being standing. This is not vision. And the only thing he said was, get back. And when he said that, I looked and I spontaneously, I just blasted in tongues and like you are seeing this and you don't see it again. And I said, what is this? The next time I would have this, I was praying. I think I was in a period of fasting and praying or so. And then my room, the ceiling just disappeared. And then I'm seeing this giant creature it looks like a dinosaur very mighty the eyes will be like this the size of one man's head you can imagine my head being the eye so imagine how the head will be and it had a long tail but that tail had its own life that means you could detach the tail from the being and it will still be alive red eyes and it was looking at me and it says so you think you will how did what i can't even remember what so you think you would bring god's people into abundance i remember and i said ah so this is the spirit that sits upon men's destinies they don't know they think it's joblessness they think it's just family conflict they don't know that these are wicked spirits by reason of the apostolic and the prophetic call i have been exposed to visions I have encountered spirits. Some of the songs that you hear us sing, I didn't write them. These were songs that I heard from the realm of the spirit and I brought it down and wrote it. So when you see me minister to people, I'm not ministering from a standpoint of ignorance. There are real spirits sitting on the destinies of men and they may not know, ladies and gentlemen, Whoever told the woman who was bound for 18 years that there was an actual spirit holding her like that? This woman kept going, hoping that things would change. If spirits can bind men, can they bind businesses? If spirits can they bind destinies? And Jesus looks at the woman and says, Woman, thou art loosed from your infirmity. She did not even know what happened. Suddenly, a spirit that has been comfortable for 18 years that woman would have remained like that 
Some of you have had some conditions around your life. Um, it's like that. I just feel dizzy sometimes. I grew up like that. You are like that woman that has been bound. But Jesus came and he said, no matter how long it has been, the longest condition we know that a man has been in in the Bible was 38 years. We don't know how long it took Job. The Bible does not record time. But at least we know that the longest recorded time where a man stayed in his tragedy was 38 years. Then there was 12 years. But when Jesus came and said, woman, thou art loosed from your infirmity. And then he laid hands and took that woman up. And when the other people started talking stupid talk, he said, ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, lo, all these years. That means in Satan's economy, time does not matter. Don't say, after 10 years, I will be free. You will never be free because of the passage of time. You will be free by the forceful manifestation of the power, the name, and the blood. So listen, I'm saying that so that as I begin to minister now, we'll be very fast. That every condition you know, long-standing conditions, don't tolerate it and say it's been there. This bad luck has followed me since I was five years. Now I'm 50 years. It's like that. Anytime people want to do things, make sure it gives way this night. The man was sitting at Bethesda, John 5. The Bible says something happened there that every time an angel will come and stare the waters. But the man had no one to help him. And then Jesus comes to him. The Bible says he was there for 38 years. Calls him an impotent man. Did his father not give him a name? What was his name? There are many of you, your condition has swallowed your name. That people only, that guy, that family that has bad luck, as if they don't have a name. That woman whose children are all miserable. That one who's, that, that church that does not grow. The impotent man. And Jesus said, no, this is not how it works. You notice all these sick people. The Bible did not seem to care about their names because there's something about demonic oppression. It, it does not just ruin your life, it ruins your name. Notice the woman with the issue of blood, no name. The man at blind Bartimaeus, no name. The man at the pool, no name. Because every time the devil attacks, among the many things he's looking for is your name. Your honor is in your name. Your reputation is in your name. I'm saying this because I want to minister to people whose names have been diminishing. You may not have something wrong with your life, but your condition has swallowed up your name. Honor that God has given your family is about going down because it does not look, it looks like there are conditions that have stained your name. Hallelujah. Every time you see kings rise, the Bible will always call their name, even if they were given other names. But when you find people plagued with conditions, you hardly hear their names. The woman with the issue of blood, the man born blind, the man at the pool, blind Bartimaeus, the man who was sitting at gate beautiful. Look at that. Oppression among the many things it seeks to take away from you is your name because you see part of the blessing that God gave Abraham in Genesis 12 is a great name I will bless you and I will make your name great if you are great alone your children cannot be great because there's nothing for them to inherit when you go you go with your greatness but when your name is great anybody who comes under that name can continue being great Today we mention names when you talk about names of, you know, American presidents, great people today. They are long gone, you see, but they are names. So when Satan wants to destroy you, he does something to your name. Are you ready to pray? So when you see me minister deliverance, it's not just about people shouting and coming out and rolling under the anointing. No, 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 no. Deliverance has nothing to do with shouting and rolling. It's about taking authority. Are we together now? 
that which is, is fighting all of these things, that, as I mentioned in your life, they clear out of the way, fighting your ministry, your health, your life, and all of a sudden you will find out that after deliverance, the Bible says there shall be holiness and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possession. Deliverance happens upon Mount Zion. That is the proper place for deliverance. I'm, a, I'm ready to pray now. You will not do anything yet. Just, just listen to me. You see, the thing with the anointing is that you have to wait on God. You don't assume. This is what the Lord is speaking to my ears. And he's telling me now that as we in this silence, that the Spirit of God, there are people and destinies that he wants to uproot things. And the moment that happens, the power of God is going to start moving. Please, I want you to bring those people here. You will not need to shout. I'm the one who will just make a statement and uprooting. I'm seeing like a weed. You know how a farmer is removing weed. This is what I'm seeing. Father, you have spoken and in the name of Jesus, I declare that everyone under the sound of my voice, please, when you just bring those people out, ushers or all those who need to help, help them, let's make it very fast so that we'll finish on time. In the name of Jesus Christ, everyone who has had a planting in their life or their family that needs to be uprooted. My God, I'm seeing fire in this place. In the name of Jesus, right now, let it be uprooted. Bring them out. Ali Shabaraso Sabasa. Kela Tobash. Whether you're an usher or not, please help them. If anyone is under the anointing close to you, just bring them out so that we'll save time. Bring them out. This is an instruction that the Holy Ghost gave. You will never stand, I'm telling you. If, this, if, there, is, if there is something to be uprooted, there is an energy, a, a force from heaven. Please bring them. Men and women. My Bible says every tree that has not been planted by God, that tree will be uprooted. That's what God is doing right now. Uprooting by the Spirit of God. Uprooting by the Spirit of God. You will marvel at the testimonies that follow. Uprooting things. Look at the wonder working power of Jesus. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands and thousands. My beloved is the most beautiful among thousands. Bring them out. Yeshua Hallelujah now something mysterious is going to happen here now there are people watch this i just saw fire through the congregation please help them there are people who will start running this is not speed this is this is a deliverance but they will start running hold them and bring them to the front this is not speed in the name of jesus i decree and declare by the ministry of fire that everyone under any captivity in the name of Jesus Christ by this sign that God has given may the Lord himself begin to bring them out now bring them out now please help the ushers 
Oppression comes to an end by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me talk to those outside. Not the other overflows, just outside. Those outside, I want you to lift your hands. I want to pray for you. The Lord is showing me something. I want to pray for those outside right now. Lift your hands. At the count of three, those outside, I want you to shout the name Jesus. And as you shout that name Jesus, the hand of the Lord is going to come on a few people and there will be massive deliverance. Just the overflow outside. As I count three, I want you to shout Jesus. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Jesus. I want you to carry those outside and bring them to the front by the spirit of the living God. God is doing a very marvelous work in their lives. Now, let me pray for everyone anyone here under the plague of witchcraft yokes of ancestry you are about to shout the name Jesus my God I'm seeing fire falling already yokes of ancestry at the count of three shout that name Jesus one two three shout Jesus be released now be released now be released now be released now Business is under siege. Families under siege. Destiny is under siege. Bring them out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. Hallelujah. The Lord wants me to speak to the men. There are spirits that have tied men in many families so that they will not rise. It's like the men become the women and the women are the men. They have to depend on the women to feed. I'm seeing at least eight people with this case. Right now the fire of God is coming on all those men inside outside everywhere at the count of three i want you to shout the name jesus are you ready now one two three shout jesus every man be delivered now by the power of the holy ghost every altar tying down men tying down destinies give way now give way now give way now Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm hearing a name Victory. 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 We don't have all the time. Um, my, my intention is for us to finish on time. So I'm not going to be doing too much of... Um, but I'm hearing the name Victory. Wherever that person... Who is Victory? Your name is Victory. I want to pray for you. God has remembered your family. I release grace upon you now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, God has remembered your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Who is Abdullahi? I'm hearing a name. This, this is, I don't know if it's your name, your son name, but I'm hearing the name Abdullahi. Abdullahi, you would think that this is supposed to be another name. Abdullahi. I just heard that name. I don't know where that person is, but in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you are, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, the mantle that has been looking for you, that is searching for your head, in Jesus' name, let it rest on you now. Yeah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rachel, I'm hearing the name Rachel. Please make sure you are organized. Don't, don't, don't cause confusion. Once, if I call you, if it's not your name, you can stand anywhere there. 
I, I'm going to pray for those in front. Rachel, who is Rachel? There is a family that God is delivering. Somebody is going to shout right now. Um, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing a spirit because I'm seeing that this week that is coming, I'm seeing written obituary and there is a family. I'm not a prophet of doom. God sends, redeems. There is somebody right now, that spirit, in the name of Jesus. I know you by name and I declare, let that family go now. 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 The family of Rachel, let that family go now. Let that family go now. Your father is a police officer. Your father is a police officer. Where is he? Where? Huh? Are you from the east? Yes, sir. Enugu? Yes, sir. Where is he? It's in Enugu. This is what God is revealing to me. Listen to me. I'm not a prophet of doom, but I'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing something happening and they are going to fight some people, you know, people like are fighting and I'm seeing something that is not good. But in the name, I don't know you, oh my, my friend. And I'm not, you believe what I'm telling you? Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, you reveal to redeem. We, we are standing here, but in the name of Jesus, we pray that anything that wants to destroy, and I use him as a point of contact, because what God says to one, he says to all. Anyone here, you have your loved ones, either in the police, DSS, military, air force, I declare supernatural preservation. Supernatural preservation. They shall not die. They shall not die. In the name of Jesus Christ. My friend, may the Lord preserve your father. In the name of Jesus. This lady kneeling down, lifting her hands. I'm seeing you wearing a police cap. Stand up. Who is it you or who? Is there anybody around your life? I'm going to pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anything that will bring you to have any kind of demonic trouble. That you need to go to the police station. Right now, I'm seeing fire from your feet to your head. I command it to give way now. Because I'm seeing a police cap on her head and I'm wondering what this is for. There's someone in the worship team. I just saw light. I don't know who that person is. The fire of God. The Lord is saying enough is enough. Enough is enough. This, this mystery of evil that has sat on your family is coming to an end. We declare it and end in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah there is a mother here one of your prayer requests is for your daughter who has not given birth now I'm not saying if you are trusting God this is a mother who came and she's trusting for her daughter I don't know who that person is but in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare you have come you have stood in for your daughter by the power that raised Christ from the dead let your daughter return with her children rejoicing. Now, all those in front here, I want to rebuke this wicked spirit by the power that raised Christ from the dead. Every legal access Satan has over your life, I declare it is broken now. And Satan, I declare as one sent by God, release your destinies now. Out of them now, in the name of Jesus out of their destinies, out of their lives, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is healing someone. You have a very interesting condition. You can snore from, like if you are lying down there, somebody who is a long distance from your place can hear you snore. Many people have told you this thing. 
and you felt very, I, I don't know why God is showing me this, but it's a condition that God wants me to pray for you for, so that one day you don't lie down and then don't, don't just wake up. This is a serious medical condition. Is there someone like that? The Lord is ministering that to me. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. I want to pray for that person. And then, number two, very quickly, Madam, thank you for your honesty. Thank you. Let's celebrate her. Takes a lot of courage. Please stand up, Madam. I want to pray for you. The devil is a liar. How long has this been? It's a long time. Very long time. Yes, sir. My friend, I want to pray for you. I don't know if there's a medical condition for it. I'm, I presume there might be. But my job is to do everything God has asked me to do. So I'm going to pray for you. The devil is a liar. That satanic thing must leave. Listen, to the silliest of things, huh? When you see God bring a word like this, it's because someone's life depends on it. And for all of you who are here, thank you for This is a family of faith, you see. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray for you. Father, just, can you just make contact with your, your neck just as a point of contact? Father, you reveal to redeem. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands now. Let that demonic thing go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it leave, never to return again. Something is leaving this guy, this guy on white. I'm seeing something like a rope on your neck. Out of him now, in the name of Jesus Christ. I bring you life, I bring you healing. That choking feeling is not an ordinary snore, like you are just snoring because you did not bend well. This is a satanic thing, and you don't pray for them, they will go to bed one night, and that's how it will be over for them. But thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph. In the name of Jesus, let it be over now. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Now, I don't want you to feel embarrassed. There are two cases that I want to pray for and then I pray for healing. The Lord is ministering this to me and I don't want you to feel bad. There are people, um, if, if you are to come out here, you have just two minutes to come out very quickly. Any and all kinds of satanic addictions, addictions that want to kill you, any kind of addiction whatsoever that has overwhelmed you and God has been speaking to you and you are saying, Apostle, I want to break free from this. I want to give you two minutes. Come and stand before the Lord right now. While they are doing that, let's begin to pray. Don't sit back there when you know that God wants to bring you victory. Once and for all. Drunkenness, pornography, masturbation, every kind of addiction. Some of you may be on some things that you take to be high addiction even stealing can be an addiction there are people who steal things they should not steal biro paper because of that you go to the police station it's not worth it so it's a spirit come once the space is full just stand where you are in fact you can stand there for now you can you can imagine this if this is all that we do today it was worth it. Great is your mercy towards me. Your loving kindness towards me. Your tender I see day after day. Let me teach you a principle. Look up. Everything God gave man, God gave man control over. The moment you cannot control it again, a spirit has hijacked it. Are we together now? Now, we're asking these our precious people to come and stand. We're not, listen, I don't want you to feel ashamed for whatever reason. No, you are standing before Jesus. This is the house of God. Addiction has nothing to do with whether you are good or bad. Some of the people standing here are some of the nicest people you can imagine. 
I have prayed for people who will steal anything. Even when you are holding hands praying, they will still carry something. It's a spirit. There are responsible people who are held bound. Some of these addictions you see have been transferred. And, and, and let me tell you this. God must raise people with this anointing and send them to the police force, the correctional centers, because there are people, no matter how long they stay there, what will really set them free is the power of God. So I celebrate all of you for summoning the courage to come. That's what Jabez did. He had to open up himself and say, Lord, hallelujah. Oh, you've been stealing, you've been stealing, you've been this and that. This is a lady that I'm seeing. There is nothing you cannot steal. And you know, I've told you, this thing works like word of knowledge. You can hide your money under the carpet. They will stand and look, look, and just go under the carpet and pick it. Parents, hear me. Some of this supposed stubbornness of children, is not like, it's a, it's a demon. Do you know that there are spirits that make children stubborn? The moment you say go left, that spirit will not let them rest till they go right. I want to pray for you. This is my work home. That demon, that satanic devil must leave you now. Our time is gone, but I'm going to pray for you. Father, these ones have come before you, the God of mercy and the God of all grace. Many of them have been tied down by all kinds of things. But the Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. All kinds of addictions right now. Satan, I speak to every spirit that has been assigned to hold you down. Some of them are spirits of inheritance. Some of them all kinds of diabolic things. At the count of three, I declare you must let them go now. Now at the count of three, I'm going to release the power of God on you and that devil will live and live forever. Satan, take your hands of God's people at the count of three. One, two, three, out of their lives now. Be free, be free, be free, be free. I break the power of addiction. I break the power of addiction. Be free in the name of Jesus Christ out of their lives now make sure you are praying for them those who are the congregation in the name of Jesus be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now listen many of you will come and stand here and testify and you will say finally God has given you freedom once and for all in the name of Jesus Christ Please return back to your seat rejoicing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, lay your hands, everyone who is trusting God for a healing miracle. Very quickly, I want you to lay your hands. Lay your hands there. And let's, let's clear the way for those who are returning back so that they return back very quickly. Pale Sani Kalibari. You are more than what people say. You are more than what people say You are bigger than what people say You are bigger than what people say Jehovah, you are good You are kind You are more than what people say Jehovah, you are good You are kind Lay your hands and believe Jesus for a miracle right now. Please don't go back the way you came. Place your hand there. I want to pray for you. You've heard the testimonies of people by the power of the Holy Ghost. All kinds of satanic things. I'm about to pray for you right now. I'm seeing a lady who is coughing out something in a vision. I mean, just like somebody just coughing. I don't know what that is, but in the name of Jesus, already I pray for that person, that satanic planting in your body. Right now, I declare that it comes out now. Please lay your hands. I want to pray for you. You are good. You are kind. You are more than what people 
Father, you have granted us the grace to see the sick healed. Some of you are lifting up the pictures, lifting up your phones. I see people who are connecting. There are many, many, many hospitals. Did you know it's so humbling to know the amount of clinics, hospitals that connect to the miracle services and the tremendous testimonies that have come out. And for those of you who are connecting right now in any hospital, you are connecting for a patient, probably a patient that is already dying, cancer, any demonic thing. Some of you are standing in for your loved ones. You may not have the time to take testimonies tonight, but in the name of Jesus, I want you to believe. He gave us this anointing and it's to be an extension of his healing power to the nations. As I pray, I want you to believe by faith and shout a loud believing amen as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is healing a breast lump right now. The power of God is touching a lady. I'm seeing a healing. Help her please. The Lord is healing a breast lump. That devil is living right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is healing an eye condition. I'm seeing the power of God touch someone. Your eyes be healed now. I'm seeing someone you are not able you are not able to go to the toilet easily i don't know what medical condition that is this has affected you right now you even need to go and see a doctor this is not just pile is it's like you are not able to stool properly and it's a very demonic situation whether you are here or following online let the healing power of jesus touch you right now there's someone you have what we call nose bleeding you can stand in the sun and blood just begins to come out of your nose. In the name of Jesus, I don't know who that person is, but the power of God is touching you now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing someone with a very, you are a man. You go to ease yourself and you're easing out blood. This is what I'm seeing. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the mercy of God, may the power of God touch you now. Every eye condition be healed now. Every deaf ear in the name of Jesus, I declare that you are open this moment. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone suffering from any bone condition, I decree and declare by the power of the Lord Jesus, let your limbs find strength now. Let your limbs find strength now. There's someone you slept on this side, the left side of your, your shoulder, and you've been having excruciating pain. The power of God is touching you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is showing me two people, your molars. If I don't pray for you, they will have to extract it because I'm seeing holes already and it's bringing you severe pain around your mouth. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be a miracle for you now. Ah, I need to pray for someone. I'm seeing a family mourning and I'm seeing someone just passing to glory and this is as a result of cancer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, because you have revealed this by your mercy and by your grace, avert death over this family. Avert death over this family. Let me pray for everyone here and those connecting online that has any trace of cancer by this unction in the name of Jesus. Let cancer die. Let cancer die. Let cancer die. Let cancer die. The Lord is showing me someone, you have a condition. I think I need to go and read this medical book so that I know the name of these things. 
you have a condition where your blood cells are fighting themselves this is what I'm seeing fighting themselves like a condition where your body fights itself not like there's necessarily an external some it fights itself I don't know who that person is but in the name of Jesus that tragedy comes to an end now there's someone you are not overweight yet you lose energy the, you can't climb the stair and just the moment you do any work that seems to exhaust you a bit you start breathing there's something wrong with your heart you are not even aware because from what I'm seeing oxygen is not pumping to your body very well and this is deteriorating it's like you have a weak heart in the name of Jesus I don't know who that person is may my God give you a brand new heart now every kidney condition be healed now every liver problem be healed now digestive problems be healed now and hear me anyone under the sound of my voice who has not been able to carry their baby in the name of Jesus Christ I don't care what is wrong with your body let it be cleansed and perfected now cleansed and perfected now cleansed and perfected now in the name of Jesus Christ there's someone something happened to your voice right now you speak you just have to hush you can't speak very loud and clear and you know it looks like you have to hush that's the only way to speak I don't know who that person is but in the name of Jesus let the healing power of Jesus touch you now in the name of Jesus there is a lady God is showing me um, you have a medical condition that will not allow you give birth and the doctor has discussed it with you there is a name he has given you the Lord is saying I should pray for you and release you from this in the name of Jesus whoever that person is be released now Amen. hallelujah someone is beginning to have a swollen foot you do not even know but your legs are beginning to swell I'm not a doctor but I'm hearing in my spirit that this is a problem with your liver I have to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ by the power that raised Christ from the dead be healed now be healed now now whether I mention your case or not from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed now in fact God is God is healing a woman I'm seeing a woman with excruciating pain around her back here in Jesus name the power of God is touching you now the power of God is touching you now now there's someone you are not on this ground but I need to pray for you someone went to give you an injection and I don't know if it, maybe it's like they made a mistake this is two weeks now you have been limping you have been limping if I don't pray for you I'm seeing that that condition is going to remain like that because something has been touched that should not have been touched but by the mercies of God I decree and declare the God who is the creator of the ends of the earth may he bring perfection to your body in the name of Jesus koinonia be healed those following online be healed all the overflows be healed all the hospitals following be healed in the name of Jesus neck problems be healed blood problems be healed organ problems be healed in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now here's what I would want you to do we honestly may not have the time miracle services require extended periods and we're constrained by time everybody be praying in the spirit now while you submit your prayer request please pray in the spirit and begin to submit your prayer request here's the time where everyone submits their prayer request if you're yet to write we'll give you a minute or two very quickly ushers please move around and let's let's be organized at this what I want you to do is you can pass it to the last person by your left or your right 
to ease um, the, the collection very quickly. If you're writing, write very quickly. Those of you who are online, here is an opportunity to receive a mighty visitation. You've heard of the things that God is doing. It's an instruction that God gave me and we've kept this for many years and the wonder working power of God out of this request. Are you praying in the spirit? Someone begin to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Shalika parosa sevrende ke sebele kosia. No shadow you will light up, mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No wall you will keep down, lie you will tear down, coming after me. No shadow you will light up, no shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No wall you will keep down. No wall you will keep down. God, you will tear down, coming after me. No shadow you will light up. No shadow you will light up. Mountain you will climb up, coming after me. No wall you will keep down. No what the Lord is able to do the Bible says no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it come into the heart of man that which God has in store for them that love him but that he's revealed it to us even by his spirit bring the prayer requests and very quickly I want you to keep praying in the spirit of your, your praying maintain that atmosphere very quickly let's pray and decree and declare even over this request I love praying on the request. Listen, I love praying on the request because it is the most accurate communication of your desires. When we prophesy, we prophesy in part and then we are constrained by time. When we minister, we minister only according to the measure of grace that is given. But then when we are praying for this, this is you like Jabez lifting up your prayer. My assignment is to stand in faith with you. We are doing the prayer together. So I'd like you to begin to pray. You are declaring already that these Egyptians I see today, ushers, please bring it very quickly. Those outside, those inside, let's hurry up with the requests so that we can cry before the God of heaven, the one who turned the life of Jabez. Give us that scripture on Jabez again. First Chronicles chapter four from verse nine. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. Not because he was better than his brethren. It was because he was the only one who cried unto God. Verse 10. Jabez prayed, call it upon the name of the God of Israel, saying, O oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. The Bible says, and the Lord granted him that which he requested. Are we together now? The Lord granted him that which he requested. Philippians 4 and verse 6. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. It says, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. It says, let your request be made known unto God. Let your request be made known unto God. Mark eleven twenty four. Jesus was speaking and he says therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receivest them and thou shalt have them the Bible says ye have not because ye ask not if you can pray and ask God he's more than willing to answer and this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything in accordance to his will the Bible declares that he heareth us hallelujah so we're praying that the God of heaven will visit us I know that you have prayed and you pray every miracle service but give this a very different attitude I want you to believe 
God will not look down on this many prayer requests representing the cries, the tears of his people. He told Moses, he said, I have heard the cry of my people by reason of their taskmasters. He says, and I am come down. God comes down by sending men. Rise up on your feet, please. Stretch your hands towards this request. And I'd like you to begin to pray passionately by faith that these Egyptians I see today is someone praying from the depth of your heart. From the depth of your heart. Shapra sobaka shoprendege berekus. E prada shalaka toska brendege berekus. Give your people testimonies by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let no request here return unanswered in the name of Jesus Christ. Let no request here return unanswered. Let no request here return unanswered in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to agree with me as I pray. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost and this grace that God has so lavishly given that in the mighty name of Jesus, these requests are hereby turned to testimonies. These requests are hereby turned to testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. For those agreeing for salvation, God will surprise you. Those trusting God for jobs, receive your miracle jobs. Miracle marriages, miracle children, breakthroughs on every side, restoration in the name of Jesus. The Lord is showing me someone's application. You've applied for visa five times and you have been denied. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, go back again. And the Lord is granting you victory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything you have written here, in the name of Jesus, including the financial situation you are in debt, my God will roll it up from your neck. I stand upon this prayer request prophetically and I decree and declare in the name of Jesus everything that has risen upon you that has become a yoke to your neck we bring it under your feet we bring it under your feet in the name of Jesus Christ now let me speak over your life Prophetic blessings are very powerful. We're not wrapping up the service. It's part of the service. Why do we speak? Because one of the ways you speak the blessing, when God ordained from Jesus himself, he blessed by saying, priesthood releases people by saying, are we together? May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family, your children, their children, 
Jesus. We're wrapping up May. June is the last of the first half of the year. And there are things that some of you are yet to see in your life. In the name of Jesus, I call upon the God who has sent us by the power that raised Christ from the dead. I know that there are still a few days to the end of May. My God will surprise you. My God will surprise you. Some of you, hear me, some of you literally by this time tomorrow, I stand by Apakatoske, help that gentleman, by this time tomorrow, may my God surprise you. Number two, in the name of Jesus Christ, I want to pray for direction. Some of you are confused. That is the reason why you are stagnated. When direction comes, speed comes to. In the name of Jesus, in your dreams, in your visions, may God give you clear directions. Clear directions for the next Clear directions for the next season. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are some of you, the reason why things are not going well is simply because you have not joined the right chariot. He told Philip, join this chariot. Hallelujah. And he joined that chariot and it became the salvation of the utopian Enoch. I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, every strategic relationship that must be introduced to your life for your rising, for your making, between now and the end of June, may my God bring strategic people to your life. <laughs> Ministry relationships, business relationships, destiny relationships, covenant relationships, receive it in the name of Jesus. Hear me, there are many of you, the situation you are in now, you cannot advocate your liberty. It will take somebody who is already in the palace. You are Joseph. You have the ability to interpret dreams, potential to be a prime minister, but you don't have a chance to defend yourself in front of Pharaoh. But there is a wine presser somewhere. I don't know who is already where, in a place where they can speak for you and they are not speaking for you because they have forgotten you. I place you in their mind by the spirit of the living God. I place you in their mind. May God cause them to speak for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to rebuke the spirit of fear. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear but of love, power, and of a sound mind. It says to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage. There are many of you, you are not sick, but the fear that is on you, you get up in the morning, will an accident happen? You just feel something small in your body and the devil says death. It is the voice of the enemy, I want to silence it right now. Every voice that is planting fear, in Jesus' name, that voice is hereby silence forever. Silence forever. Silence forever. I prophesy over you, you shall not die. No untimely death in the name of Jesus. Please hear me. Anybody that is plotting evil against you, whether kidnap or accident or sickness, in the name of Jesus, let the earth open and swallow them. Let the earth open and swallow them. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
any charm any coven any satanic place in the name of Jesus that carries anything that belongs to you I declare that the power fails instantly let me pray for someone who is trusting God for a job in the name of Jesus may Ebenezer the helper of men surprise you in the name of Jesus every ministry here every business that is dead or dying everything in your hand that is dying you are holding something that is dying I give it life now let it come back to life now your business comes back to life your body comes back to life your ministry comes back to life in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah whatever has taken the glory of the Lord upon your life for Samson it was Delilah that took that glory from him for Gideon something happened and he the least person the least in his father's house all those idolatry brought them to a place of subjugation whatever has taken the glory of God upon your life you used to be great you used to be anointed you used to be favored something happened and you just started drying up like a tree in the name of Jesus may the restorer restore you tonight I say it again may the restorer restore you tonight may the restorer restore you tonight hallelujah please hear me any door that was once open for good and whether by mistakes on your part by not understanding the laws that keep doors open or by some demonic thing that door closed whether doors of favor doors of relationship doors into the heart of great men I stand and call upon he that has the key of David the one that opened it and no man shut it and shut it and no man open it I speak to that door a fata be open be open be open the door to the hearts of kings be open the door to your destiny help us heart be open in the name of Jesus Christ I've taught you that who hates you does not matter but truly who likes you matters are we together let me pray for you you are not stagnated but you are not making constructive progress it will take you one year to do something that can be done in two months that is not the will of God I want to declare acceleration for you by the power that raised Christ from the dead some of you between now and the next two months you will do things you have not done in five years I prophesy you will do things you have not done in five years in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I'm hearing the Lord is saying something to me I must obey him the Lord is saying there are families where there are covenants that you and your children will never marry or enjoy marriage or marry and go back to your parents homes the Lord is saying I should speak over you I stand by the privilege of priesthood every family that the doors of marriage has been closed let it be open now 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 and in the name of Jesus for every marriage right now that is epileptic it looks as if it is crashing the devil is joining the head of husband and wife and causing trouble I declare peace to that storm peace to that storm the wisdom to live in peace let it be released upon you in the name of Jesus koinonia hear me in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare when men say there is a casting down for you let it be that there is a lifting up whether you are in Abuja you are in Lagos you are in Kano whether you are in Nigeria you are in UK you are in US regardless the location from tonight may the blessing speak on you may the blessing speak on you with that blessing let there be favor 
with that blessing let there be speed with that blessing let there be restoration with that blessing let there be restoration i say it again with that blessing let there be restoration in the name of jesus two more prayers can i pray for your finances for as long as i live i will not only see to it that you are vibrant spiritually and growing in influence i believe in economic empowerment where god empowers the right hands once god has a heart that loves him and that you are able to use resources to better your life and to advance the cause of the kingdom there are no restraints to him making wealth available are we together by this prayer for some of you what you will be receiving is wisdom by this prayer what you, some of you will be receiving is access to the right resources but then in the name of jesus i pray the bible says believe it says and by a prophet the lord god brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet they were preserved it says believe the lord your god so shall you be established believe his prophet so shall you prosper i pray for you god who has shown many help god who has shown many mercy picking men from unbelievable pits and raising them to places of honor i call upon that god to surprise you in your finances no more dryness in your finances personally corporately no more dryness hear me if there is any one of you here who is owing whether as a company whether as an individual i don't care owing is owing anybody who is owing in the name of jesus christ i place an unction upon you come out of that debt now come out of that financial situation now in the name of jesus christ wave your hands to jesus and give him praise Wave your hands to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, let me encourage you. Make sure you take note of the things that God begins to do in your life. And make sure you are open to testify. You can always meet the media weekdays, weekends, and then when you come, we always like to hear what God has done in your life. Give me a minute or two to make an altar call. You need Jesus. I want to lead you to make Jesus Lord of your life. You are in this place. There are so many thousands of people outside. All the overflows are in this place. We have waited this long. We have stretched. Please, just a moment, just to make that call. Let's minimize movements. Let's respect the altar call. I want to give you a chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. You are in this place and you are saying, Apostle, please give me an opportunity. I really want to make it right with Jesus. I came here desiring Jesus. I have received healings. I have received breakthroughs. But I want Jesus. I need him as a matter of life and death. You're also saying, Apostle, I need restoration in my Christian life. I'm counting one to five. Please leave your seat and be on your way here. Let's celebrate them as they come. One. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Let's celebrate salvation. Come. Come to Jesus. Thank you. Thank you very much, young and old, male and female, come. Come to Jesus. Come. Come. He truly will give you a new beginning. Don't say the time is gone, come. An encounter of a few moments will change your life even forever. Are you coming to Jesus? Hallelujah. Shame unto the devil. Come to Jesus. He's giving you a new beginning. Apostle, you do not know what my life has been about. Uh, there's almost nothing to write home about. Come. Jesus is able to give you a new beginning. Even by the Spirit of God. Come. Hallelujah. Now, I salute every one of you for making this noble decision. Can I request that you please raise your right hand high above your head and make this decision. This is the greatest miracle that can happen in this place. I want you, those who are following online, if you're coming, please make sure you come quickly. All the overflows, make sure that um, those who are standing in for prayer, this salvation prayer, make sure that they have the time and the chance to pray. And then those who are praying online, this is your opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. Say this loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I believe that you died for me. I believe 
that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Lord, my Savior, and my King. In the name of Jesus, the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I declare that eternal life is mine. From tonight, I am a child of God. Amen. Father, thank you for these precious ones. They have come making their faith declarations. I declare by the integrity of Scripture that you begin a new walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and I empower you to walk in victory. You go from glory to glory and from grace to grace. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Now, please, may I request that you follow the counselors there at my right. This gentleman, please, you can go. What's on your face? Is it two more? Can I, let me just stretch. I know I've prayed for people. Stand there. Let me just pray for you. I just saw his face and, and I was so caught up with compassion. Father, I pray for this gentleman. In the name of Jesus, this is a satanic tumor. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm praying. The same way this tumor came out, in the name of Jesus, it dies from now. The life and the power that is giving it the life to keep swelling like this, we cut it off from that supply. And I declare you will not die. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Let's give him a big hand clap. <laughs> Hallelujah. Koinonia, I want you in conclusion to, I want you to cherish what God is doing in this place. Especially for those of us who have been planted here. Do not get familiar. I know that, you know, you, you eat and breathe miracles, signs and wonders. Do not get so familiar with the dealings of God. You have three responsibilities. Number one, you have a responsibility to believe and receive these truths for yourself. Number two, you have a responsibility to draw as many. May God bless the person or the family that brought this, this gentleman here. You'll be surprised. There are many people who have escaped from death from all kinds of things. You have a responsibility to do the work of an evangelist. And then number three, you have a responsibility to intercede and contribute towards the growth and the continuity of this vision. Make sure you are faithful in all of these three. The least you can do is to pray for us. Are we together? He said, brethren, pray for us. Paul was speaking. So thank you for staying. It's late. And our intention was to close early because of um, the... Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching. In the name of Jesus, drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain